Hello and welcome to another update of my collection. State of the collection update. So, my Breitling hat is new in my collection. Woohoo! <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> I got this from George Kern during a dinner, which was very, very nice during the Dubai Watch Week. So, thanks, George. Excellent brand. New watches from Breitling. Um, I like the new Chronomart. Love the new Avenger. Even though I like the winged logo better than the B logo. What am I wearing today? I am wearing my Tissot PRX Powermatic 80 Glacier Blue or Ice Blue, whatever you want to call it. Depends on which country you're in. I love this watch. It's a very cool watch, everyday watch. I recently bought the PRX Chrono, um, the Panda Dial, um, but I needed to sell it because I had two more watches coming in. So two watches had to leave the collection and unfortunately the PRX Chrono was one of them. Um, the other one that left the collection was the Moser Heritage Dual Time. I, w I really loved that watch, but it had to go because unfortunately something has to go if something new comes in. I now have a watch box that has 12 slots and in these 12 slots, yeah, these are, they, they're all taken. So that means if something new comes in, something has to go. So this is the uh, Martin Baker 3 from Bremont. Still a watch that I really, really enjoy. Uh, Bremont currently rebranded under the new CEO, Davide Cerato. Um, the new watches, I actually do like them. The new Terra Nova and the Supermarine, I think they're pretty cool. I don't like the Terra Novas with the compass bezel. They're a bit weird, a bit icky for me, but Everything else, I actually like the new Supermarine. The new logo is something that um, a lot of people took criticism to. Maybe it is a bit, yeah, I don't know. But I, I think it's okay. It's fine. And the new font, I, I, do, I do find this as well quite okay. But this is the Martin Baker Super Shock Resistant GMT Watch ETA 2892 movement in it. Um, soft iron cage, pretty good, anti-magnetic. Anti and super shockproof, super robust. I love it. Next, still in the collection, Pelagos 39 on this Uncle Straps uh, Jubilee style bracelet. Uh, it's a beautiful watch. I recently traveled to it with Af to Africa with it. I uh, love it. It's just I, I put it on the rubber strap for that trip. It was super cool. Uh, very light, very robust. I just I just love that watch. Next, my Breguet Type 20. Yes, Aero Navale. Um, this watch is from 1997, sorry, 1997 and originally was delivered with a black dial to the authorized dealer in India. It was actually sold in India. And uh, some when somewhat somebody changed this to a blue dial. The blue dial was actually reserved for the white gold or generally gold versions of this watch. So it's a rather rare dial. I'm very happy that I have it on my watch. How it happened, nobody knows. It's a long time ago, but it is all original um, and it makes this watch a bit more special. So I like it. What else do we have? Another oldie but goldie. This is my Seamaster, Omega Seamaster, I think it's the 1706 from 1973. It was originally delivered to an authorized dealer in Burundi and Africa. So who knows who owned this watch before? I don't. Maybe I want to know, maybe I don't want to know. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Anyhow, it's mine now. So whatever vibes were on this watch are now gone. It's now mine. So um, this is a plexiglass with an Omega logo on it. It's in super condition. I just love it. This is on a rubber strap at the moment for the summer. Um, and it works just fine. Some of the pushers and you know counters and subdials don't actually exactly reset to where they should go but hey what can you do it has two central hands one is for the seconds one is for the minutes because here you see on the three o'clock we only have the date all right that's that and it's a lemania movement by the way so and what else do we have my super ocean breitling super ocean um this watch only made from 2009 to 2010, for two years, they made the Breitling Super Ocean Arrowhand. This was just before the Super Ocean 2 
was released. And this watch is a chunky, <laughs> chunky man. Sorry for my dogs barking, if you heard that in the background. Um, yeah, so this watch is 1,500 meters um, water resistant. Crazy amount. But of course, there you have a bit, it's a bit chubby. It has an automatic helium escape valve, as you can see there. I had this watch before uh, on a rubber strap, one of my first, and I bought it in 2010. So it, yeah, just when it was still under production, uh, or in production, sorry. And what I really like about this watch is that it's, it's just, it has the old Breitling look, right? Uh, the applied white gold uh, logo with the wings, even though it's a dive watch, it's just, it's so cool. It's of course a chronometer spec watch, so it is uh, very precise, has the ETA 2822 in it, with of course only 38 hours of power reserve. I sold this watch after 12 or 13 years or 14 years, 15 years, I have no idea, um, wearing it and, no sorry, of course I bought it in 2010, so about, yeah, 11 years I sold the watch, I missed it, and I said to myself, whenever this watch will come my way again, locally, I'll purchase it back. I mean, of course, not the same, the exact same watch, but the same model. And this watch came my way. And it came also on the original bracelet. So, well, obviously, I bought it back. It's the only watch I bought back in my life. <laughs> but, yep, that's what it is. And I love it. What else do we have? We are now going to the top of my watch box. So we have here, that was the lower part, right? And now we have, we are going to the top part. So here we have the Glashütte Original. Oh, stop. Hey, I missed one. I missed one. I have to stop. The IWC Type 20. Ha! One of my new additions. And um, just want to quickly talk about this. Also, Thanks for all of the people who commented on the last video that I don't keep the watches steady enough, that I move them around too much. You're absolutely right. I was just, I don't know what I was doing. So thank you for that comment. I hope that I'm doing better this time and let you actually look at the watches a bit more in detail. Um, let me quickly tell you what's different on this Type 20 to the Mark 18. Sorry, not Type 20. Mark 20 compared to the Mark 18. So first of all, it's the same diameter, but it is a tiny bit smaller from the Lux to Lux. So they have reduced the Lux a bit. What else have they done? Most of it is on the inside and on the dial side. But even on the case, they made, of course, the changes as I met, mentioned already. So the dials are a bit shorter. The uh, Lux width is the same, 20 millimeters. You now have a polished bezel ring that was not polished with the old one. And you have, I think, a bit more pronounced chamfering here on it. The brushing is radial on the top and horizontal on the sides. So that's a pretty, pretty nice look. Then, of course, you have um, changes on the dial. And they are very subtle, but they're there. So what you have is, um, oh, I think you can't really see it now. Um, let me change the time so that it's easier for you to see. So we now have a date window that is a tiny bit moved to the outside, so it's now exactly between two and four, and the numbers have been moved a slightly bit inside, so you have a bit less negative space on the dial. Uh, we also have the 12, uh, the 9, 3, and 6 indice uh, index. They are a bit prolonged. That gives a bit of this crosshair look. And you also see the IWC logo and this triangle have been, I think, a bit moved upwards and a bit, I think they're a bit smaller now. So little changes, but they make this uh, dial a bit more symmetric, a bit nicer, at least for me. I like it better this way, uh, even though the old one was totally fine. I fell in love with the old one with her Le Petit Prince, and I really wanted to have one for the longest time. But now this one came along less than two years old in perfect condition with a bracelet. So I thought, okay, let me just buy this one then. Yeah, uh, the date disc is also new. The date disc is now always white, regardless of the dial color. That was in the older versions. It was actually in 
the color of the dial that has changed. And I think on a distance, if you see it from far away, it makes it very symmetrical. So it's actually quite nice in white, even though I usually prefer dial color, dial, dial colored uh, date discs. But anyhow, this is what it is. Beautiful bracelet, easy exchange system, so you can just clip it out and take it off. Uh, micro adjust with a press of the button on the middle of the clasp. So you have all of this on the fly micro adjust while you're wearing it. Super cool stuff. So I love that watch. Um, it's it's so comfortable to wear. Uh, it's just insane. So um, also the bracelet, beautifully comfortable. It's probably very, very close to a Rolex bracelet from a comfort level and from a quality level that you feel. Um, maybe 95% of it. Really, really well done. Well done. Yeah, so let's go to the top of the watch box. Glashütte Original, um, Panomatic Reserve, still in my collection with a panoramic date and the reserve indicator, power reserve indicator, small seconds, and then of course the normal dial, beautiful silver dial, lovely, lovely rose gold, and of course the beautiful movement with the micro rotor on the back, the double swan neck, hand engraved. Oh, it's just such a pleasure to look at this watch. So nice. Beautiful. I have it on this blue strap at the moment from OptoWatch. Very nice. Oh, so really enjoying this. So yeah, that's that. All right. Let's go to the next. My one and only Rolex in the collection at the moment. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's strange, but I only have one Rolex in the collection. So it is what it is. This is the GRNR, GMT Master 2. So the 126713, two-tone. Um, yeah, it's not too much to say about a Rolex GMT Master 2. Everybody knows them. Everybody uh, has an idea of if they like them or not. I love it. I think I'm a fan of two-tone watches and gold watches at the moment. So yeah. It's a cool watch. It's super comfortable to wear. It fits my wrist perfectly fine. Um, meh. It's just a beautiful watch to wear. And that's that. Okay. So what else do we have? Okay. Let's go to the next one here. I have a Vacheron Constantin overseas still in the collection. Uh, currently on this um, Alcantara strap from Deluxe. I love that you can wear uh, buy um, watch uh, watch straps from other brands as well with the quick exchange system, which is super cool. I got some more straps for this watch: a white one, a blue one. Um, of course, it came with a black rubber and black leather, and of course the bracelet. Uh, yeah, love different straps on watches, and this is a nice, nice combination. Uh, really like it. On the wrist, it's super cool. And Alcantara is just a great material. It's like a microfiber from, from, from Italy. It's a very, very cool material. I love it. So, okay. Back to another gold watch. Still in my collection, the Blancpain ah, annual calendar Demi Sabonet with a moon face. Ah, the Blancpain moon face with a nice traditional moon. Lovely watch with a guilloche dial. Ah, it's just a fantastic rose gold watch. Very heavy, very nice, very, very well done watch. Um, you have the pointed date that you can see that it shows the 31st at the moment. And of course, the two indications for the date, uh, for, the, sorry, for the month and the day. Ah, what a watch. I told you maybe already that this watch was kissed by Jean-Claude Piver during Chuba Watch Week. I interviewed him and uh, he actually took this watch from me, gave it a kiss and said that it's one of his biggest regrets in life was to have sold Blancpain to the Swatch Group. Yeah, anyhow, ah, and I can, not, not with my bloody gloves on, but I wanted to show you, of course, the wonderful Hunter case bag. That's why it's called a Demi Sabonet, which I think in French means half soap bar. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or the hop soap, oh, soap. Yeah, I don't know what it. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, my French is terrible. So we have here this beautiful hunter case back. So you open the watch and the case on the back. Everything is solid gold. Here you see even this little piece is decorated, and then of course the guilloche 
golden rotor. Beautiful movement. 72 hours of power reserve. And that is a watch that is um, from 2011. This is an, uh, it's a very old watch. I mean, not very old, but it's still in the catalog, so you can still buy this watch. But it's a beautiful movement inside. Two barrels, very, very precise. And as you can see here, you have the patented um, lugs under this little flap. Usually, Blancpain, and they have a patent on that as well, puts the, the pushers here on be, into the lugs so that you can do that with, a, with your fingernail or a small toothpick. You can actually adjust, for example, the date, the moon face and uh, other things here with the pushers directly. And uh, this is hidden here under this little... Um, yeah, under this, under this little case back because you don't have enough space when you have this case back to actually use your nails or, a, or a, um, a toothpick. They have actually made these pushers part of this underlying structure here. Only for this watch. Pretty cool. Beautiful watch. Yeah, love it. That will stay in my collection for, I wouldn't say forever, but for the foreseeable future. Let's continue with the next um, Blancpain, and that is here, this one. It's the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Bathyscarf. Also a watch that I really, really, really like. This blue is just mesmerizing, a beautiful dial. I think it's only this blue dial is so nice and deep and um, has so much of yeah depth to it. It's just and of course, you have so much of negative space on this big dial. It just shines, this, this dial. So I think it's only being bested by the Vacheron Overseas, Vacheron Constantin Overseas blue dial. Um, but it's close. This is really close. Ceramic case. Really nice. Hope you can hear that. Um, really nice bezel. I uh, have to just put it straight again because, you know, uh, we have OCD people, of course. So this is um, 120 hour power reserve, 1315 movement, former Frederic Piguet movement, which is of course now part of Blancpain. Um, a solid gold rotor as well here. We see it's, 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 it's 22 karat gold, then blackened, then uh, four different surface treatments, polishing, chamfering on the sides, satinization, sandblasting and brushing. All of this stuff you find on this little rotor. On the bridges of this movement, you find also lots of decorations and hand-finished chamfers. Ah, it's a beautiful movement. And it's so precise, I can't tell you. 120 hours of power reserve, and it's it's actually better than my superlative chronometer Rolex. Um, it's more precise than that. It's just incredible of how good this movement works. Ah, yeah, I forgot to say, this is as well here, obviously. Another change of this watch is that it has the 32111 movement inside, also 120 hours of power reserve. Uh, same movement as in the IWC Ingenieur. So we have here in this beautiful entry level model for, from IWC the same movement as in the Ingenieur. Is that bad for the Ingenieur? Hmm. Or is it good for the Mark 20? Who knows? <laughs> All right. So, the Blancpain ceramic case. My latest addition to my collection, full ceramic. Here we go. It is the Gérard Perigot Laureato 42 millimeters full ceramic. This is a watch where everything here you see is either ceramic or titanium. So, case is ceramic. Bracelet is ceramic. You have a few bits and pieces that are made in titanium, like here, the, the clasp. Um, it's just such a stunning watch. So that's why the Moza had to go. I saw this watch here, I put it on my wrist, and it felt so comfortable that I felt, I need to have it. I just need to have it. So I just was able to sell the Mose for mm, not the best price, but a reasonably good price. So then I was able to buy this one and the IWC Type 20. So that was that. 
really nice. And I love this watch. It has a beautiful movement in it. Here you see, for example, this is a date disc in dial color with a very interesting Gérard Perigot font. Lovely serifs on it. It's just a super cool watch that is very easy to read, extremely comfortable to wear, and it's just, I, it's a stunning watch. I, I know that a lot of people love the Laureato in general, and I like the steel versions, but this ceramic version is something else. It's just amazing. So you have a very thin watch, actually, and you have, of course, brushed and polished ceramics, which is very, very hard to do. I mean, this is not an easy task to do, to get a ceramic polished like this. Um, I don't know where they get their cases, if they make the cases and the bracelets themselves, but it's absolutely stunning. A wonderful watch. Um, yeah, and uh, these two are my latest additions that you probably haven't seen yet. So there you go. These two are new. So yeah, where do I see my, my collection going in the next in the next couple of months. I hope it will stay the way it is because I'm very content at the moment. So I think that's it. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.